Hi, my name is Margret. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to Print Writer. We're going to start by creating a new file that includes some random numbers. And in order to do that, I'm going to create an instance of random and I'm going to do that as a field because we want to create the random instance only once. That not only avoids having unnecessary objects on the heap, but it also provides me with better randomness if I keep reusing the same random object. So here's my private static object of type random. I call it rent. And that is a new random object. And we need an import statement. Uh, here is Java Util random. In addition, I will need to decide where do I want to store my file. I like to separate my Java code from my additional resources like images, text files. So I go to my package right here, File.io, and I'm going to create a new folder. And I just call this text files. There we are. And I want to store my files right here in this text files folder. So here I'm going to create a string. It is called file random numbers and it includes the relative path to my file inside that folder. So here we need to navigate from my source folder to file IO to text files and the file itself should have the name random numbers. So here is my file. Now what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to create that file and I'm going to use the class print writer. So, uh, print writer is a class that implements the interface auto closable. Every time a class implements auto closable, we need to ensure that the object gets closed regardless whether there's an exception or not. A great way to do that is by using the try with resource statement. So here we have the try uh, statement and inside those parentheses we are going to declare the resource. The resource needs to be a resource of a type that implements auto closable, in our case print writer. And I call my object writer. And you can see print writer needs an input statement. So we're going to include my print writer from the package IO. And we create a new print writer based on the relative path that we defined already here in our variable file random numbers. So that's what we're passing here. Now we're creating a new print writer. And the moment I have that, I get a red weekly line. I roll over it and I get a reminder. I can either add a throws declaration or a catch clause. The reason we have to do one or the other is the following. The exception that can be thrown by print writer is a checked exception. And checked exceptions always need to be either declared or caught. In our case, I want to catch them. So roll over it. Eclipse helps me out. I go to catch right here. I click on it and then it gives me a file not found exception. For now, I just leave the to do auto generated catch block and we are going to get back to that a little bit later. So at this point, I have an instance of print writer and now I can use that to print to the file. Writer has the same print methods that we have been using to print to the screen all along. So you can see here we have print, we have print line, there's also printf. So we have the typical print methods we are familiar with. And in our case, we're just going to write five random two-digit numbers to our file, each in an individual line. So we need a print line. And uh, here we're going to write the random number, which is rand next integer. They're 90 two-digit numbers and they start at 10. So I'm going to add 10. Now, this is only adding one single um, random number. I want five, so I'm going to use a loop. And we are going to uh, make sure we do that five times. 
And at that point, we should create a file called random numbers right here in our folder. And it should be filled with random two digit numbers. There's one more thing I would like to do that is add a message at the end of my main method. So I know I made it to the end because I cannot see the output. I'm not printing on the screen. I'm printing to a file. So here I might just have a, a quick statement that says something like done. And at that point I get some feedback that my execution made it to the end. I'm going to run my code and I can see done. However, when I look in my package explorer, I cannot see my new file. Now this is something to keep in mind. If I create a new file, the package explorer doesn't get updated automatically. So I can right click, I can refresh and now the triangle uh, appeared and I can see my random numbers. And when I click on it, I can see there are indeed five two digit numbers. Let's have another look at our code, in particular at the catch class. Notice the name of our exception is file not found exception. Now you might wonder why was this exception not triggered? Clearly, the file random numbers, the text was not there. We just created it. Now this has to do with the fact that class file represents a path. So the file not found exception checks is that path, a real path. So if I would have a typo here, maybe a second F, then the uh, appropriate directory could not be found and the file not found exception would be triggered. Let's try it. So here I'm going to run my code again and you can see here we have a file not found exception because the text f files was a directory that doesn't exist. So let's undo that. It is good enough if we just print the stack trace and at this point we have again a running version. We reached the done again and we are going to extract the method. The method is going to be called write numbers to file. There we are. And I'm going to add a doc comment. So we're reminded what the method is doing for us. At this point, I have the write numbers to file right here. I can comment it out. So if I want to revisit that first part, that's great. We can bring it back. For now, we don't need it because we created our random numbers already. The moment I comment it out, I get a yellow wiggly line because we are not using the method anymore. So I'm going to suppress this warning. At this point, we are ready for part two of this practice exercise. In the second part, we're going to read the random two digit numbers from our file randomnumbers.txt and we are going to create a second file based on those numbers. We're going to print them in the decimal, octal and hexadecimal format. So we are going to create a second string that includes the relative path to this new second file. Here is my string. I'm going to call the second file decimal octal hex dot text and the variable name is going to be file decimal octal hex. So we're going to assign the relative path and we are ready to open one file for reading and another one for writing. We're going to use the scanner which implements auto closable. We're going to use print writer B that implements auto closable. We can do that in one single try with resource statement like this. So here is my try um, statement, the parentheses for our resources. And inside those parentheses, we can declare both the scanner that reads from numbers, our uh, random numbers.txt, and the print writer that is going to write to a brand new 
uh, decimal octal hex dot text file. What I would like you to do is to give it a try. Declare the reader of type scanner and the writer of type print writer. They should be separated by a comma. Pause the video. When you're ready, press continue. Here is something to compare it with. We still need some import statements, but before I go to the import statements, I want to point out something that is very important. Here, when I have my print writer, I can pass my relative path as argument to my print writer constructor, and the print writer will write to the file with the specified path. I could do something similar to my scanner. I could path a string. However, the scanner would not interpret that as a path to a file. The scanner would just read from the string directly. That, would mean, that means the scanner would believe that this string here is the content, which is not what we want. We want the file content to be read, not the string. So in order to make that work with our scanner, I'm going to create a new file based on that relative path. And I'm going to add some import statements here, the scanner from Java Util and the class file from Java IO. And the moment I do that, I get initial, additional red wiggly lines. So when I roll over it, I'm again reminded that we are dealing with checked exceptions. They need to be caught or declared. I'm going to choose that we are going to catch them. And again, uh, Eclipse is going to create a catch clause for file not found. I'm going to take out the comment for now. And at this point, we have a reader and we have a writer. And now we can create a while loop that keeps reading as long as there is another integer. When you look at class scanner in your Java API, you will notice there's a method has next int. As a matter of fact, there's many methods that are similar, has next int, has next double, etc. So we can check is there a next integer. And as long as there is one, assign it to a local variable n. Give it a try. Use a while loop. Check whether there is a next integer. If that is the case, read it and assign it to a local variable n. When you're ready, press continue. Here is something to compare it with. I was using a while loop. As long as my reader has a next integer, read the next integer and assign it to a local variable n. Now we're going to use this local variable n in order to write something to the file decimal octal hex. And we're going to use a printf statement for some formatted output. So here, I'm going to say writer printf, and my format string is going to specify that we want to have three different formats. We want to have the decimal format, and the octal format, and the hexadecimal format. And um, at the end, we also want to have a new line. So here is my new line. And because we have three format specifiers that represent the number, I need to provide the number. It's always the same number. It's just formatted in different ways. So I'm going to provide my n three times. At this point, the output should show the different number formats, but we don't have the columns quite yet. We're going to uh, get back to that in a moment, but I would like to have a first feedback. So we're going to run the code and we're going to look into the file. So let's save, let's run the program here. 
you can see we made it to done again. Uh, the new file does not show up in our folder. And I'm going to right click, refresh, there it is. And now I can peek inside and I can see I have my random numbers and my random numbers are presented in decimal format, then in octal format, and then in hex the hexadecimal format. There is no special character for hexadecimal. It's a little hard to see that this indeed is hexadecimal. What I'm going to do is the following. I'm going back to my program and I'm going to run write numbers to file again. The file random numbers to dot text is going to be overwritten. So the numbers are not appended at the end. It, the content, whatever content was in the file is going to be uh, deleted and whatever we write there will be the new content. So when I run it again, I make it to done and I can look in my random numbers. Now they start with 32 and this time I can see the C here. So that is the hexadecimal representation of the number 12. Uh, what I would like to do is uh, one more thing. I would like to print my octal numbers in columns of size 3 and my hexadecimal numbers in columns of size 2. And I would like to have leading zeros. I'm going back to my code. I'm going to uh, comment out the right numbers to file method because when I comment it out, I won't change my random numbers to text, which means once again I should have the C with a leading zero this time, and once again I should have three examples where my octal number is only a two digit number, and we can actually see the leading zeros. So the way I can specify the width of my column is with a number. So my octal numbers should have the width three and my hexadecimal numbers should have the width two. And in addition, I would like to specify that we want leading zeros. The way I do that is before I specify my width, I add a zero and I do the same thing for my hexadecimal numbers. I'm going to save and here I'm going to clear my output just so you can see the done is going to reappear. We are going to run it. Again, we made it all the way to the end and I'm going to look at my random numbers. Still the same. We did not change it this time because we commented out the right numbers to file method call but we got a new decimal octal hex uh, file and this time we have the straight columns and the leading zeros. At this point we're nearly done. A few more things. I want to remove superfluous empty lines so my code is nice and structured. And I would also like to add a doc comment to my class every time we have a public class it should have a doc comment. This is it. I hope this exercise helped you with class print writer. Have a good day.